Hey everyone, it's me. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're doing something book related. You guys are gonna see more books from me for a while now because uh, politics depresses me. So for now, we're gonna be focusing on books. Today I'm going to be starting a new series on my channel where I tell you all about books that come from all around the world. We're going in alphabetical order. I have a list of 80 countries because I was unironically going to call this series around the world in 80 books. And then I remembered that I'm not old enough to be a dad so we're just gonna call it books from around the world something i've noticed in everyone's like reading resolutions is to read more diversely and that's been the case since like i joined booktube in like 2016 and nobody actually does it but worry not i am here to help i will be giving you a list and if by the end of the list there's a country that you are interested in that you don't know about wait till all the episodes of this series are out and then ask me about it and i will personally recommend you something all these books are books that i would read and i would want to read so there's a lot of non-fiction, a lot of literary fiction, a lot of memoirs. You get the gist of it. Let's get started. So the first book I actually read this month, it's a novella. I really, really enjoyed it. So the country is Austria. And for Austria, I selected The Royal Game by Stefan Zweig. Also, can I just say, since I read that, I'm seeing Stefan Zweig everywhere, like in bookshops. And I, I never even heard of him because I have zero general culture. But for some reason, I read his novella and he's like everywhere now. <laughs> so this is a novella about a man who has been driven completely insane by his solitary isolation by the Nazis. A great time to be reading about isolation but basically the only way he managed to keep himself sane is by playing over and over again in his head a series of chess games and for this he uses a book that he stole from a chess master and when he's in this isolation thing waiting to be questioned over and over again he you know uses breadcrumbs to play chess plays the games over and over and over in his head it kind of leads to him developing two different personalities so i white so white pieces and i black i you know me well not me him uh black pieces and it's fucking good guys like i i haven't read all the books on this list obviously i haven't even read 80 books in my life probably not 80 books worth reading anyway i read this it's the second book i read this month and it is really really good and i definitely recommend it if you are interested in psychology in all the shady shit that can go on in people's head after they are essentially traumatized definitely would recommend it next is australia so i was actually going to choose a book called picnic at the hanging rock by Joan Lindsay. It's basically about a group of students who go for a picnic like they all died and it's kind of framed as this true story but then I realized I would never actually read that book so I'm not going to recommend it but I'm just throwing it out there in case anyone would like to read it. But the book I'm actually going to recommend is a book that I, that I found in my mum's bookshelves and I think that it is something that I would really really like to get to soon. So Aboriginal Stories by A.W. Reed. I would really really like to get to this. I have grown up always going to see my family in Australia for Christmas and I was always fascinated by Aboriginal culture. I always loved the art. I always went to museums but I realised I don't actually know a lot about them. It, it, this is me, you know, I just get interested in things but not interested enough to know things apparently. So this is a collection of short stories that supposedly stem from Aboriginal culture and have been o orally told for generations and first of all I fuck with short stories so much, like I really really like them and I think that it would be a great opportunity to kind of give more of a voice to the original people of Australia, like no shade if you're Australian, but I think that it's really really important to be aware of the culture that was there before the English people came along, you know? So I would definitely recommend this, obviously I'm not going to give a blurb because it's a collection of stories, can't really give a synopsis for that. Yeah, definitely really want to read this one. I hope it's still in print. If it's out of print, I'm going to look really fucking stupid. The next country is Afghanistan. I don't know why it comes after Austria and Australia on my list, which goes in alphabetical order, but it does. So The Kite Runner by Khaled Hosseini. I really want to read it. It seems so important, especially now. It's so relevant to learn about Afghan culture. So this book basically goes through the fall of the monarchy, the Soviet military intervention, and the rise of the Taliban and immigration. And this is also supposed to be a really, really well-written book, so I definitely want to read it. So basically this book follows the story of two Afghan boys who come from completely different backgrounds as they make their way through this kind of 
difficult situation in their country. I don't know much about it, to be honest. I feel like this is the kind of book that I would really like to go into not knowing much about it. Next, Argentina. So the book I found for this is a book called My Father's Ghost is Climbing the Rain. This also seems very interesting to me. It is about a young man who returns home to visit his dying father and he finds himself in a situation where he searches obsessively in his hometown for a man, a local man who went missing, as you do. It is basically a story where, you know, it starts with him just going to see his dying father and takes off with this main character, basically uncovering all the grimy shit that he wouldn't have known about otherwise. So his family's shady involvement in politics, there's stuff about corruption. I love that shit. I really do. So uh, I'm certainly going to be ordering this one when I have money. So the next country is Belgium. Now, I am very sad to say that I haven't found a lot of suggestions for it apart from like the big classics but one that I had no idea about and I definitely definitely want to recommend is Captain Vampire by Marie Nizet. Okay I'm just gonna tell you one sentence about this book and then I'm gonna let you make up your mind about it and then you can move on to the next country. It is known as the inspiration to Dracula. Like this book inspired Bram Stoker's Dracula. This is the original vampire story. If I haven't sold this to you. Next country is Brazil. So for this one, I selected a book called The Brothers by Milton Hatun. So this is set in 20th century Lebanese community in Brazil, which I thought was really interesting. Uh, we follow the story of two twins. One is a huge success and the other is a huge fucking disappointment, which I can already relate to. I've read reviews and from what I've seen, it covers every taboo subject under the sun. So that is certainly something that I'm interested in. I'm, I love shock value in books. When I saw people saying, I mean, I didn't think it was gonna be this shocking. I was like, oh, I love being shocked. So this is one that I certainly, certainly wanna read. Next country is Bulgaria. I have realized I know next to nothing <laughs> about Bulgarian literature. For this one, I chose by Ganyo, Incredible Tales of a Modern Bulgarian by Eleko Konstantinov. Uh, this might be famous, this might not be. I'm guessing it probably is, but then I wouldn't know because ignorance. This starts with the story of a man who just like happily trots around Europe. This main character is basically every middle class white girl, you know, like traveling, trying to find himself, like yoga retreat in India, whatever, except that this isn't in India, he just travels through Europe. From what I've understood, it starts off as satire, but then it turns darker when by Ganyo, the main character, comes home and uncovers corruption in his country, the political instability, the bribes, that all the, all the shit that I love to read about. This video is so pointless, like I, I feel like this is only going to be ever useful to me because this, all this, all these books are tailored to like my taste. So this one certainly seems a lot more interesting than I originally thought it was, so it's definitely not the first on my priority but I still am interested in reading it. My voice hurts. Oh. Okay, so next country is Bolivia and I actually have two books for this one, one non-fiction and one fiction. And the non-fiction is not by a Bolivian author, which is why I chose two. Uh, so the non-fiction is Marching Powder by Thomas McFarlane. I actually downloaded it on Kindle on my computer. It hurts my eyes to read, so I'm probably going to go through it very slowly. But basically this is about an Australian journalist who gets involved in drug dealing in Bolivia. He gets in and out of prison. It's just like the grimy underbelly of criminal in Bolivia and how he infiltrates it. My shit, absolutely. It goes through him dealing drugs, bribing the prison guard so he can share a cell with his like best mate with who he also like sells drugs. I don't know, seems interesting. The inmates are expected to buy their cells from real estate agents. Others run shops and restaurants. Women and children live imprisoned with family members. This prison that he's in literally seems like a fucking gated community, you know, like a little neighborhood. Corrupt politicians and drug dealers and drug lords, they have like these fancy fucking apartment type cells and the poor prisoners are just like subjected to squalor and deprivation and it's just incredible that a prison would operate in this way. In my mind, like you're in prison, you get a bed, a shitter and that's it, you know, no. Not, not in Bolivia apparently. And the second book, it is by a Bolivian author. It is called Let Me Speak by Domitila B. De Chungara. De Chungara? I don't know. T I'm trying, I'm trying, okay? This is basically just the testimony of a wife of a very poor Bolivian tin miner. She basically describes the hardships of being a woman in this type of community, of being 
a woman in the working class of you know kind of a social documentation of her the author is actually i think an important political figure from what i've understood so i think that it could be a very interesting read as well so these are the two suggestions for bolivia so next we have bosnia and herzegovina so for this one i chose zlata's diary by zlata yes uh, Filipovic? Filipovic, yeah, I think so. This is basically the Yugoslavian version of the Diary of Anne Frank. So if you are someone who is interested in learning more about the breakup of Yugoslavia and the impact it had on, well, in this case, young children from an easy to read perspective, I feel like this is a good place to start. I've heard it's very engaging. I don't think I'll be reading it anytime soon though. Like it's not that it doesn't interest me, it's just that I have other books that are on my to be read list that are more interesting to me for the moment. Okay, so next is Canada. So for this one, I also have two picks. So the first is obviously Margaret Atwood, The Handmaid's Tale. I am putting this one in there because I really want to read it. But the one I chose for the list that you probably might not know about is a short story collection, How to Pronounce Knife by a Lao Canadian author. It fucking seems interesting as hell. Again, I love short stories, so I thought that it would be interesting. It's all about kind of the day-to-day -day lives of the people in Canada but every story from what I've understood uncovers this kind of grimy undertone to every person's life which I'm so into I really really want to read this soon it's definitely high up on my priority list okay next we are moving to China I have two suggestions for this one as well so the first one I also read this month it's the first book I read this month and it's also a novella so it is A Madman's Diary by Lu Shun as the title indicates it is about it is the diary of a man who claims to have been cured from paranoia and that is why he has consented to have his diary published and can i just say it's the most insane over the top shit i've ever read insane the way he sees the world i don't know if this is like a real diary that was published if it is just a creative writing piece but holy shit there's some passages the neighbor's dog looked at me twice like what does this mean are they all trying to eat me because yeah did i forget to mention this particular particular man is paranoid about people eating him and him being cannibalized. So that's definitely my type of shit. I would recommend it 100%. And the other book I read, oh god, am I gonna find it? Oh, this is such hard work. We Have Been Harmonized by Kai Stritmata. Obviously not a Chinese author, again, why I picked two. And again, this is non-fiction. This is 1984 on steroids, is the best way I can describe it. And it scares me, like a lot. Uh, I read it, this is the last book I read in the month of January. It scares me so much. <laughs> It's so unnerving, but it's basically about the surveillance state of China and oh my god There's this one bit that really stuck out to me because it's just so incredibly over the top and ridiculous If you want to be a sperm donor, you can't be like a dissident because otherwise they don't want your dissident genes to be like passed on Okay, <laughs> all right. So yeah, if you are feeling like a little bit of scary shit that is happening around the world that I, I, rec I recommend that one for sure. So next we have Cuba. I have always been so interested in Cuba's history. I don't know why. So for me, my first choice would be <laughs> I'm gonna give you two options for that as well because I know that my first choice won't be everyone's first choice would be my life a spoken autobiography by Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro's memoir is uh, what I want to read. I know, I know. I'm really into memoirs and I'd be very interested to read what Fidel Castro, the person rather than the historical figure, kind of had to say. So that is going to be my pick. Um, otherwise, Havana Red. Basically, it is about a young transgender woman who is found murdered. She's found in a red dress. It is an investigation into her violent murder and in basically discusses certain aspects of Cuban society, kind of discrimination that trans people were facing at the time, aspects of the corrupt society, etc. But yeah, I kind of want to read Fidel Castro's autobiography first. Okay, so next country. Croatia. Hang on a minute. I actually bought one recently. I recently found a bookshop near in Brussels that has like books in 30 different languages or some shit. Like maybe a bit less. It's a bookshop that has all the European languages. And I had selected at first like a random book that I found about on Google from for Croatia. Because my only experience in Croatian literature is fucking Hlapic from when I was like 
10, okay? So, not gonna recommend that unless you're 10. In that case, yes, read Klarpeach. But for this one, I chose EEG by Dasha Drnich. Can I just say, this is exactly up my alley. It is basically about a woman who survives a suicide attempt and the entire book is about her reflections on society. Now, this would be the book that would be most impatient to read, but I, I don't know if my creation is actually good enough for me to go through the entire thing. You know, my, my brain stopped computing and improving my creation when I was like eight or nine. Uh, and this is definitely not a middle grade book, even though it's so, so, so up my alley. Like this is exactly the type of shit that I like to read about. So if you are interested, I, I hope it's being translated. Otherwise, I'll again, I'll feel stupid. Uh, next country is Chile. So I chose Curfew. It takes place on a 24 hour period in January in 1985, I believe. I'm gonna read a quote because I can't be fucked to remember. I made this list like two months ago, by the way, so I don't remember shit. Jose Tonoso evokes the suffocating atmosphere of a country under dictatorship and its quietly devastating effect on the actions of those who live there. That is certainly my shit, so that's why I chose it, okay? Next on the list is Colombia. So for this one, I chose a classic that I really want to read, 100 Years of Solitude by Gabriel Garcia. It's a classic and I really have wanted to read it for a very long time and I still haven't gotten to it. So I'm hoping that by me putting this on this list, it's going to subconsciously make me want to read it more. Probably not going to do anything. I've heard that it can be quite slow at times, which at the time where I started wanting to read it would have scared me. But like now I literally do not care about a book being slow as long as it's like well written and the prose is interesting. Like I can sit through pages and pages of nothing happening. Happening, but it needs to be well written. Do you get what I mean? So I think that I am ready to try and read 100 Years of Solitude, but it's not going to be straight away. I'm like, I don't know why, but for some reason I'm really, really intimidated by it. So next country is Cyprus. I had a lot of trouble finding something for that one, mainly because I didn't find a lot of books that had a translation. For this one, I chose a book called The Traders Club by Marina Christofides. This one actually seems quite interesting. It is about the divine capital of Cyprus, Nicosia, and about a group of friends who are divided by politics and from the both, both sides of this kind of uh, capital share experiences over coffee as you do. They are considered to be traitors because they are friends with people who view themselves as people from Cyprus rather than Turks or Greeks. Even though it's fiction, I think it would be a very interesting way to learn more about uh, the kind of political climate that has been occurring in Cyprus because shit, dude, when when I was like researching all that stuff, I realized how little I know about fucking everything and how interesting everything is. So a lot of the books that I have on this list are kind of meant to help you understand more about uh, the history of a certain country, which is what I'm into generally. Next country is Czech Republic. And I'm sorry for like pulling out such a cop out suggestion for this one, but I have to because I've wanted to read this for such a long time. And for this one, I chose Franz Kafka, The Castle. Look. I've read The Metamorphosis when I was like 14 and I didn't really get it. Like, I thought it was like, okay, but look, I I'm, I was slow at the time as well. I've grown to be able to get a little bit more out of my reading, but at the time I read Metamorphosis, I was kind of like meh about the whole thing. I didn't really get it. And then I found this and I have heard nothing but great things about it. Kafka seems like the sort of author that would be right up my alley today. And I heard he was from Czech Republic, so chosen for this list. If you guys are from the Czech Republic or you know about Czech literature, maybe like give me a suggestion in the comments of something that's a bit, little bit less of a cop-out book because I haven't really found anything that really sparked my interest. So yeah, let me know in the comments. Okay, so uh, next country is going to be Denmark. We're on to letter D. So for this one, I chose Stolen Spring by, oh god, Hans Scherfig? That one. It was first published in 1940, that way you know. And the main theme of this book, I believe it's the work of literary fiction, is kind of the solidarity of boys in boarding school and kind of exposes all the brutal treatment that they are subjugated to. Um, I find boarding school stories from like the 50s really, really interesting and it is described as part murder mystery and part social criticism. I couldn't have asked for anything more. Okay guys, this is it for episode one of countries from, wait, no of books from countries around the world. I cannot concentrate for more than 10 minutes. Wow. So I'll give you a little recap. We have gone from Austria. We did 
talk about Afghanistan, but for some reason it was third on the list rather than first, even though we're going in alphabetical order, but we've been over this, I'm a dumbass. Two, Denmark. And next time, we're going to start Egypt and we're gonna get to Latvia. So yeah, and then all the countries in between. So we'll have Finland, we'll have France, we'll have Kenya, we'll have Japan, India, so many exciting shit planned. That wasn't, wow, that wasn't even English, okay. Look, I'm tired, so I'm gonna go now. Uh, let me know which of these you would like to read. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, subscribe, whatever. Like, I, I, I know it does nothing for me to say it, but like, do it. And yeah, thank you, thank you for watching, and I shall see you guys soon. Bye!